Live from the TV30 studio, here is Jim Schneider. Good evening. Welcome to In Focus. We're glad that you've joined us for the broadcast here this evening as we focus on a topic that uh, perhaps some will say is politically incorrect, uh, a topic that is not religiously correct, some would say as well, but uh, one that we're going to be dealing with it tonight. You see, since the September 11th Islamic terrorist attack here upon uh, the United States of America, there is a word that has come to people's vocabulary. It's a word of jihad. We're going to be talking about this evening, and uh, we are going to talk about it in light of the fact that we've been told that Islam is a religion of peace. So how do those two sides weigh in the balance together? Is it peace or is it war? Is it peace or is it jihad? Uh, and uh, also, there has been a lot said about Islam being a peaceful religion. So we'll be taking a look at that as well as about Ramadan. Why is so much Islamic terror coming during the month of Ramadan when it's supposed to be a time of self-evaluation, a time of fasting? Why then so much Islamic terror? So we'll be talking about a number of those issues uh, uh, tonight. With us, we have Usama Dakdak. Usama is the founder of the Straight Way of Grace Ministries. Uh, he is also the speaker on the daily radio broadcast, Revealing the Truth About Islam. You see his program here on TV30, uh, Straight Way TV. Uh, he does speak, uh, speak uh, fluent Arabic. He has translated the Quran into English. He's author of Exposing the Truth About the Quran and Exposing the Truth About Jihad. Usama, welcome to our studios. Thank you, Brother Jim. It's always my joy to be with you. Great. Appreciate and uh, again, just uh, for sake here, this is the Quran that you have translated mm -hmm. uh, into English. You have uh, put out a two-part series here, Exposing the Truth About Jihad. Uh, first of all, Holy War in the Bible, and then the re Unholy War, Unholy war in, uh, in, uh, certainly in the Quran. So we'll be talking about that second book uh, here more so this evening. Um, your book here, uh, dealing with Unholy War in the Quran, we are told that Islam is a religion of peace, but you say people are ignorant. They're ignorant of the Quran and what it teaches on this topic. It's amazing, Brother Jim, that uh, people will say Islam is a religion of peace. But in reality, how can Islam be a religion of peace where we do not have any peace in the Quran? The only time we read the word peace in the Quran is Quran chapter 47 and verse 35. Direct command from Allah to all Muslim believers. Do not be weak calling for peace when you have the upper hand. Brother Jim, when you read the interpretation of that verse by all Muslim scholars, you'd be shocked to say that they're all in agreement. Normally in Islam, many verses, scholars disagree. But when it comes to the topic of jihad or the topic of killing, mm -hmm. they're all in agreement. They said, do not stop fighting the infidels. Do not stop, don't even have cease of fighting. Continue to fight them to annihilate them. If you have the upper hand, if not, then you can have what we call temporary peace. Not real peace, but temporary peace. And they give the noblest example how Muhammad himself understood that verse, Quran 47 and verse 35, mm -hmm. and how Muhammad practiced it. He made peace agreement with the infants of Christ. It was supposed to last 10 years, but three or four years after he made the, the agreement, he went and invaded that uh, city of Mecca, and he literally got rid of all the Jews and the Christians and established the uh, state of Islam in his days. So this is the reality. Muslims are peaceful when they do not have the upper hand. But if they have the upper hand, they are very, very savage. And that is the reality, not only of that one verse of the Quran, but the history of Islam the last 1,400 years. So what does the name Islam mean? Well, that's another good lie. In America, they tell you Islam means peace. Mm -hmm. The word Islam comes from the word salam, shalom, peace. No, the word Islam means surrender. Mm -hmm. You surrender, you submit. Peace have nothing to do with Islam. There are two separate words. Maybe they sound the same in the Arabic language for those who do not speak Arabic. But if you ever even watch a movie in Egypt and you see the policeman is running after a thief or a criminal, what does the policeman say? Peace? No, he say Islam. And what happened if the thief continued to run? He would get three, four bullets and he would be dropped dead. That is the word Islam. It is to submit. Submit to what? To submit to the word of Allah in the Quran and the saying of Muhammad, the words of Muhammad in the Hadith, and also to follow the Sunnah of Muhammad. Whatever Muhammad used to do, that is what Muslims are doing in the last 1400 years. So you said peace is only used once in the Quran. Quran 47, 35. I would challenge any one of those who watch us tonight to prove me wrong by bring us verse from the Quran, unabrogated verse where Allah said to the Muslims, live in peace uh, with the Jews, live in peace uh, with the Christians, after all. 
We are the people of the book. No, you will never find this yeah. written anywhere in the book. Well, Quran. let's take a look here at Quran 551. I believe we have this on a slate. Oh, you who have believed, do not take the Jews and the Christians as friends. They are friends to one another, and whoever among you takes them as friends, so surely he is of them. Surely Allah does not guide the unjust people. This is a command of Allah, Brother Jim. Not to any Muslims, but to Muslim believers. He did not say, oh you people, no. Oh you have believed. And the command is not to take the Jews and Christians for friends. And in, in reality, if you, if you look at uh, in, in our ministry alone, the last 20 some years, full time ministry, I have never became a true friend with a Muslim unless he or she became a Christian. Not, I did not choose them for a friend. They have to take me for a friend. Because I'm a friend with everybody. It doesn't matter if you hate me or like me. But the moment a Muslim take a Jew for a friend, he become a Jew. The moment a Muslim take a Christian for a friend, for a friend, he became a Christian. And if you investigate the teaching of the rest of the Quran concerning the friendship between Muslims and non-Muslims, you find it zero. Because if you named your pig or your cow, you'll never kill it. If you have a friend of a Jew or a Christian, you'll never kill him. The rest of the teachings of the Quran, 929, 95, 47.4, 4, and many other verses, Allah orders the Muslim believers to kill, to engage in war with the Jews and the Christians. So if you take them for a friend, of course you're not going to kill them. Listen to that verse. I hope that uh, our producer can show my screen here from my uh, computer. This is a command of Muhammad, and it says here, do not initiate salam. The word salam is peace. The, the word they tell us in America, which actually means Islam. No. Do not initiate the peace to the Jews and Christians. If you meet them in, uh, if you uh, meet any of them in a road, force them to its narrowest alley. This is the command of Muhammad. So how can you tell me? Allah in the Quran said, don't take the Jews and Christians for friends. Mm -hmm. And Muhammad in the Hadith said, be a bully and start fighting with them. And you say, well, Islam is a loving and peaceful religion to the Jews and the Christians. Yeah. It does not work that way. Usama, people would say, though, you're, you're being hateful. They would say that we've got freedom of religion here in the United States of America. Is Islam just another religion? Is it just another faith? Of course not. Because what happened is, let me ask you a question. Can I start a KK group here in America, a KKK group? And, and we just mm -hmm. go out and do whatever we want to do in the near future. Can we do, is it legal for KKK to start a place in America and move on with their life like yeah. it used to be? It would not be accepted. It's not accepted. So why Islam is accepted? Mm -hmm. Islam is accepted because the people of the West have been lied to, especially after September 11, by everybody. We've been lied by our politicians, we've been lied in our public schools, we've probably, or been lied by many of those scholars themselves, ministers, Christian ministers, liberal ministers of, in, any, in any way or shape or form. And, and, and that is what's <coughs> happening. Since September 11, we've been lied to Amer in America to believe that Islam is just another loving, peaceful religion. Therefore, mm -hmm. if, it is that, if that is true, then Muslims have the right to practice Islam in America. They have the right to build a mosque in America. They have the right to worship in America. But what the American people do not know is that Muslims for the last 20 years, even after September 11, they're practicing what we call Taqiyya Islam. Quran chapter 3 and verse 28, where Allah said to the Muslim people, you cannot take emphasis for friend, similar to that which we read mm -hmm. in Quran 551. Mm -hmm. But there's exceptions there. You can take a, a, a Jew or a Christian for friend, for you guard yourself for them cautiously. Quran 3 verse 28. If you have Brother Jim, you can read it. 3, 28. Yeah, I got it right here, and we'll get the overhead camera here. It says, uh, believers do not take the infidels for friends rather than the believers, and whoever does, not, uh, does this so that he has nothing to do with Allah, except that you should guard yourself with them cautiously, and Allah himself warns you, and to Allah is the final return. You see the word except there? Here's the exception in that verse of the Quran. The exception is if you want to protect yourself from them, mm -hmm. If you read the interpretation of all Muslim uh, uh, scholars, like uh, for example, Al-Jalain, he said, if you are weak in a land, if you are in a foreign land and you are weak, you can take them as a friend, let's get a friend, with your tongue, not with your heart. And this can only practice to whoever live in a country he's not strong in it i.e. Muslim in USA. So if you live in America and you see these Muslims, wonderful, loving, friendly people, and you think that Islam is love and peace, and, and they worship the same God, and they believe in Jesus and Moses, and three branches of Abrahamic tree, and on and on with all these lies, why not they build a mosque? Why not they worship? Why not they bring the rest of their families here? Mm. What we do not know is the right, when the right time comes, these loving, peaceful people, by the way, you could not find one Muslim imam in America. 
who's not a loving and peaceful person. But if you go to Egypt, you will never find one Muslim Imam who is a loving or a peaceful. Let me say it again. All Muslim Imam where I come from, they are angry mafia. All Muslim Imam in America are loving and peaceful. You know why? Because they're practicing the Taqiyya 328 with their tongue, not with their heart. Until when they have the upper hand, when they are no longer minority in America, when they have enough people to literally dismantle this country, then they will practice what they have already told us they will do in America in uh, many of their own writings, which we have in America. You know, I'd like you to comment on that further because we remember, we recall what happened September 11, 2001, and there are those who will say, listen, Islam was hijacked by extremists. It mm. was hijacked by radicals. It was hijacked by fundamentalists. Uh, this is not true Islam. How do you respond to that? A good video we covered in, in one of our study, uh, Islam, a face hijack. That's one of the six DVD which we uh, really cover in our mm -hmm. ministry through uh, uh, TV here. Islam, a face hijack. And what is beautiful about all these DVDs and the response, it is their lip service. If Islam has been hijacked, why can't the Muslims quote from us the verses in the Quran to prove their point? Instead, if you give me a lip service, see, because Allah in the Quran said, because Muhammad in the Hadith said, because the teaching of Islam goes like that, and that goes against September 11. They have zero verse. They have zero. One of the teachings of Muhammad about Islam is hijacked. But when we open the Quran, when we study the teaching of Muhammad in the Hadith, what do we see? We see the teaching of Allah is very clear to take over the world by the age of the sword. That is mm -hmm. how Muhammad started his Islam 1400 years ago. That's how Islam continued to exist in the last 1400 years. There is no love and peace in Islam. Islam hijacked the Muslims. Muslims, victim number one of Islam, and sadly, the rest of us, everybody else in the world, are victim number two. This is the reality of Islam. If you study the Quran, you may hear all these people over and over again say the broken record about Islam has been hijacked. But in reality, they cannot support with any of the teachings of Islam that what they're telling is true. So they're simply lying to the American people. Usama Daktak, our guest here this evening from the Straight Way of Grace Ministry. Uh, Usama, I'm going to refer to a jihad report that's come out. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a, a website that f tracks all the, uh, the uh, jihad that is taking place uh, in Islam called the religionofpeace.com. And they have a jihad report for April 2nd through April 8th, last week. Sure. Uh, and uh, they indicate that... That is the first week of Ramadan. 28 yeah. attacks, uh, 144 people killed, uh, injured of 178, suicide blast zero. Uh, countries, uh, 14 different countries. Uh, there is also a jihad report for the month of March of uh, 2022, where sh they showed last month 151 attacks uh, took place, uh, and I believe that's now jumped to 152. Uh, killed 886, uh, 909 injured, suicide blast six, and uh, 24 countries taken place. And then there is also Islamic terrorists have carried out more than 41,200 deadly terror attacks since 9-11. 41,200 deadly terror attacks since 9-11. Do you ever hear these numbers in any other media in this country? No. You mean Fox News or CNN or CBS do not talk about that? Not at all. Because it's going to paint the true picture of Islam. And by the way, Brother Jim, I don't think this is even an accurate number. Because I guarantee you, like many times when I grew up in Egypt, we know there's an attack. And we know that the Muslim killed 50 Christian and wounded 300. And when you read the newspapers, they will tell you six were killed or eight. Wait a minute. We buried 15 people. Why you put six? Because they know that the six, the number six, mm -hmm. will come to America or those who are studying numbers. I guarantee you these numbers is much less than, real, than reality. But nobody will talk about it because if it's going to make Muslims look bad, if it's going to destroy the beliefs and the lies of Muslims, which is teaching the West, mm -hmm. then we're not going to talk about it. And if you talk about it, for sure you're Islamophobe or whatever names you want to put on you. This is the reality. Political correctness is about to destroy America, and we're using it to dig our own graves. I'd like to go back again to 9-11, uh, 2001. And uh, again, that's when people started understanding jihad and what was taking place here in our nation. But yet at the same time, we see our president at the time, George W. Bush, make statements talking about Islam being a religion of peace. We're going to pause and take a look at a video clip, and I'd like to have you sure. comment on it here. Sure.
also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. It's practiced freely by many millions of Americans and by millions more in countries that America counts as friends. Its teachings are good and peaceful. And those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. What do you say about that? Well, first, Mr. George W. Bush told the American people Islam is a religion of peace. Islam is a religion of love. You have to understand that that video took place four days after September 11 in a mosque near Ground Zero. As a matter of fact, while Mr. George W. Bush declaring to the American people that Islam is a religion of peace, Islam is a religion of love, there were still people alive under the revel of September 11. Mm -hmm. They were not dead yet. I believe Mr. Bush, when he made that statement in the first four days after some September 11, he was in shock. He is confused, like most American people are. But the second video played for us, Brother Jim, that is in the first state uh, uh, address, the union address, which Mr. Bush did actually three months later, I believe. And why in the world did he continue to lie to the American people in that speech? And for the following seven years, he continued to do the same thing. Lie, lie, lie about Islam. The reason he did this, political correctness. The reason he did this, because he does not want to go in a big war with the Muslim world. Because in reality, if you're going to take it, war and, and, and uh, retaliation for what happened, you're talking about war with a 56 Muslim country. 57 Muslim country. You can't do that. When Thomas Jefferson faced the reality of Islam 200 years ago, he went in war with Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, four countries. And it was four years. And he stopped, not because he won. He stopped because he could not, could not continue to go in war with all these Muslims. And Mr. Bush was a little bit coward, a little bit ignorant of Islam, and he did what he did. He said, we respect your faith. Here's my question to Mr. George W. Bush. Do you call Islam a faith when Allah in the Quran, Quran chapter 5, verse 72, if the producer can show my computer, I just want people to read the verses as I'm quoting. Here we go. Infidels indeed are those who said, surely Allah is the Christ son of Mary. Imagine with me, Brother Jim. Allah in the Quran is telling the Muslims, all the Christians are infidels. And Mr. George W. Bush said, we respect your faith. How can you respect a face call you an infidel? Continue with the following verse. Infidel indeed are those who said, surely Allah is a set of three. Once again, the Quran, the word of Allah, declared to the whole Muslim world that we are infidels. If you are a Catholic, if you are a Baptist, if you are a Presbyterian, if you believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you're an infidel. And he tells the people of America, literally months after September 11, that we respect the religion of Islam. And those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. When he said that in that address, Brother Jim, everybody clap hand. The senators, the congressmen, the cameraman was clapping hand. Everybody clapping hand. The Muslims celebrate. Why? Because they do not know the truth about Islam. The truth about Islam, here we go, as we look at my computer one more time, Quran chapter 47 and verse 4. So when you meet those who became infidels, so strike the next. That is decapitation until you have made a great slaughter amongst them. So how can Mr. George W. Bush, Brother Jim, tell the American people that he respects Islam mm -hmm. and it's a loving, peaceful religion, it's a wonderful face, when, the, when Islam declare all Christian and infidels and Muslim must behead all Christians until they have made a great slaughter among the Christians. I'm sorry, this is the oxymoron response of Mr. Bush and those who believed his lies. Well, we do know that the, the population of Muslims increased under the Bush administration, sure. increased significantly under the Obama administration, but we had President Trump then come on the scene, and uh, we're gonna, we have, have a video clip of him as well in which he was really questioning what is behind this Islam here. Let's, let's listen in. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what is going on. I think Islam hates us. There's something, there's something there that there's a tremendous hatred there. There's a tremendous hatred. We have to get to the bottom of it. You're it's true. 
what Mr. Trump said is true. And, uh, you know, I, I wish he was a little bit kind in his word, not using other ungodly word, unplugged word. He would be hurt bitter. Mm -hmm. But he, uh, that's his personality. That's his character. Muslims hate us because Islam teach Muslims to hate us. You could not find one verse in the Quran. We're talking about 114 chapters. Mm -hmm. You will never find one verse in the Quran where you see Allah or the teacher of Muhammad in the Hadith where Muhammad says, love Christian or love Jew. But the opposite is true. I know Muslims like to quote early abrogated verses in the Quran. These are verses which Allah used in the early days of Muhammad. Like Muslim practice taqiyya in America today, the Allah put verses from Muhammad in the early days when he was living in Mecca. But when you look at all these verses, you will never find a verse say, love the Christian. Yeah. Live in peace with but, the Jew. But in the Bible, Jesus said, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, Clear pray teaching. for them that despitefully use you and persecute sure, that you. That is a biblical teaching. You mm -hmm. could not find any verse, not even love your enemy, love the neighbors of yours. Mm -hmm. The verses of the Quran, Quran clear teaching, and we cover this in our uh, book, Jihad on Holy War in the Quran, that Muhammad orders the Muslim believers, according to the word of Allah in the Quran, to engage in war with the near infidels. So you fight the, the, the infidels, the Muslims live in a community who surrounds them. Don't fight the Muslims, the infidels of the Muslim faraway country. Let the Muslim near them do it. They were fighting their, their neighbors. They were killing their neighbors among the Jews and the Christians, according to the word of Allah and the Quran and the command of Muhammad and the Hadith. Mm -hmm. That is Islam. So they hate us. We know this to be a fact. How, how do I know that? I read the Quran and I studied the Hadith. How do I know that? I just looked at the history of the last 40 mm -hmm. years. We're not talking about a small group here or there who are making these mistakes and they hate some Christian Jews. That is the solid teaching, the foundation of Islam from the days of Muhammad until today. And it will continue until Christ comes back. You know, your book here, Exposing the Truth About Jihad, Volume 2, Holy, Unholy War in the Quran. I mean, you mentioned right here in this book, Usama, that uh, the words engage in war 79 times are listed in the Quran. Exactly. And, uh, and it's amazing when Muslims defend Islam, they said it is defensive war. Somebody come attack Muhammad, somebody come attack the Muslim people, they have to defend themselves. But if you study these 79 verses of the Quran, you will never find one of them where somebody attack Muhammad. The Egyptian did not go all the way to Saudi Arabia to attack Muhammad. Neither the Syrian, neither the Lebanese, neither the Turkish, neither the Moroccan, nobody. Muhammad started the war, launching war against his neighboring country. Mm. And before he died, he had 12 armies. Jesus changed that world with, the, with 12 disciples. Muhammad with 12 armies. Those are thousands and thousands of men who love death more than anybody else love life. And that's how Muhammad established religion. 79 verses engage in war. Read the interpretation of these verses by all Muslim scholars. You will never see one of these 79 oh, for self-defense. No, they were all offensive war for the purpose of performing jihad. Jihad in the Quran? Yes, I even wrote in my book. Here's the verse. I said, you don't see the word jihad in the verse, but guess what? When you read the interpretation of Muslim scholars, they always say, this war is about jihad. This war, it is for Allah for performing jihad. Beside that, Brother Jim, we also have 26 verses in the Quran where Allah mentions the word jihad. And the interpretation of all these 26 verses by all Muslim scholars is for Muslim to engage in war. So in simple words, War is jihad, jihad is war, and we got plenty of verses in the Quran which order, command Muslim mm -hmm. believers to do so. Not one verse teach love or peace. So are you talking about extreme Islam in that? Well, I, I, I love... Or is that all of Islam? Well, brother, if you're a Muslim, you're a submitter. Mm -hmm. You're submitted to what? To the word of Allah in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Allah said, kill yourself, you kill yourself. Allah said, kill the Jew, you kill the Jew. Allah said, whatever Allah said, that's what Muslim practice. So these verses in the Quran is a direct command to Muslim believers. Allah calls them Muslim believers. Muhammad calls them Muslim believers. They call themselves Muslim believers. And here in America, we call them Muslim extremists. As if the word extreme or the word radical or the word fundamental have something wrong. Uh, it is because in reality, Brother Jim, since September 11 until today, all our politicians, the media here in America, they twisted this word and they wrote about them and they spoke of them in a negative way. Oh, these are the radicals. Oh, these are extremists. Oh, these are the fundamental. But in reality, when you study the Bible, our Bible, the Christian Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, mm -hmm. you see that the prophet and the apostle 
our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, God the Father, all of them are radical, extreme, fundamental. And there is nothing wrong about it. If you practice these words within the doctrines and belief of Christianity. I'm an extreme Christian. I love my Muslim enemy. That is not normal. Normal, I love those who love me. If you hate me, I hate you back. But Christianity teaches to be extreme, radical, fundamental in our love to our Muslim enemy. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus says, love your enemy. On the other hand, Brother Jim, when you look at what the Quran teaches for Muslims, the Muslim believers, he said, kill them, whatever you find them. Besiege them. Lay wait for them with every kind of ambush. When a Muslim practices that, we call them extreme Muslim, radical Muslim, fundamental Muslim, meaning they are true Muslims who are practicing Islam. And when they do that, Brother Jim, here in America, we put the negative twist in it. No, they are Muslims. They are, let me put it this way. If you are extreme Christian, you look like Jesus. If you are extreme Muslims, you look like Muhammad. Have we studied the life of Jesus and what Jesus taught us and what Jesus did, you would know that he was extreme loving, fundamental loving, and uh, radical loving. Even when he was on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Or they do not know what they do. Now, if you study Muhammad and the teaching of Muhammad, you find that he was very radical, very extreme, very fundamental in practicing the evil acts, the, the fundamentals, the, 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 the teaching of the Quran, which make him and everyone who follow him a savage. You are like who is you believe in. If we are not like Christ, we need to work a little bit harder to get closer to Christ, to be like Christ. And when Muslims become like Muslims, they are nothing but savage jihadis. Usama, I uh, have your book open here to chapter number six called The Deception of Care. Uh, Care is the Council on American Islamic Relations. Um, I noticed the clip that we aired of President Bush had a representative from Care in the background. Um, so you mentioned that Care is deceiving here, that there's the deception of Care. So who really is Care and how are they deceiving? Well, Brother Jim, I have a whole study on Care because. When we examine the tree of care, where tree come from, <clears throat> they actually come from Hamas. You got the leaders of Hamas burst to us in America care. Of course, we know that Hamas known in America to be a jihad organization, mm -hmm. and we don't want to, uh, you know, we cannot do, tie any Muslim in America by Hamas. But when you study care leaders like Nahad Awad and uh, Sheikh Musab and other people, you find they are the members of Hamas. As a matter of fact, from the Holy Land Foundation trial, we find out these Muslim of America, they are literally, at that time, I have no idea what the number is because the number continued to grow every day. There were 30 jihadi organizations. They're all Muslim Brotherhood, and they all support Hamas. They were collecting millions of dollars in America and sent it to Hamas to use in the war against Israel. And through these documents, we found also what it even is worth. And the American people until today, they do not know. It's called the strategic goal for Muslims in North America, the blueprint which Muslims wrote by their own hand some 30 years ago, were in it, they say, they would destroy America from within. Mm -hmm. They would replace the U.S. Constitution by the Sharia, Islamic law. And boy, oh boy, Brother Jim, we're moving on. We're moving on. I thought when September 11 happened that this will slow the Muslim in America. But in reality, that's the opposite. Yeah. September 11 helped the Muslims to take over America. That since September 11 until today, not only our politicians in America are brainwashing the American people by their lies about the loving, peaceful Islam. Now we have already, for the last 17 years, brainwashed all the new generation of America. Those who maybe will not remember September 11, they all believe that Islam is love, Islam is peace because of the amount, the huge amount of lies we have put in our textbooks in every public schools in America. God help and, us. Yeah, and I'm just looking here, the final chapter in your book, chapter 16, is called The Destruction of America. Is sure. that what you're talking about? Exactly. Uh, I, what I did is I went through the, uh, the, uh, the strategic goal for Muslim in North America, and I, read to the, I wrote to the American what the Muslim wrote by their own hand. Mm. And boy, boy, if, if, if people would just get this book to read the last chapter, they will see how severe the problem in America wow. is huge. Wow. I don't think even, and by the way, I don't know, maybe if Muslims know about this book and uh, the politicians, but they maybe remove it from the, from the market and maybe they lock me up because I'm doing here what uh, our friend Phil Haney did. Literally what Phil Haney, mm -hmm. and I did not add too much in this last chapter except I put their document. Here is what Muslims said we'll do in America. Yeah. And when Phil, Haley, when Phil Haney named some names in his book, and he was about to publish another book, we know for sure that he was killed. 
And I believe this is how Muslims are going to take over America. You speak against Islam, we're going to get rid of you, and you better speak something nicely about Islam mm -hmm. because otherwise you're going to be standing against their way, and they don't want anybody to be in their way to stop them from taking over this great country. Well, Usama's book is available through his website, thestraightway.org, thestraightway.org. You can look under books and materials. You've got tons of DVDs there and other information as well. But yet we are seeing the head of care, Nihad Awad, that was standing behind President Bush. We are seeing all kinds of press releases coming from CARE all the time. Sure. They're encouraging their membership to, to get into politics sure. and to run for office. Yes. Uh, we're seeing that happen. We're seeing uh, them put out press releases saying, here, there's, there's Islamic hatred, hate crimes against Muslims. Yeah. Brother Jim, I can and say... And they're wearing suits and ties. Sure, they're, they're Americans. As a matter of fact, if you see some of these Muslim imams when they pray, and we, when, when, when we now allow them to pray in school events, in, uh, uh, in the uh, political events, everywhere you can. When you hear this Muslim imam pray, mm -hmm. you think you're listening to a Baptist minister praying. Wonderful prayer. Care condemned every attack after the attack happened. I wonder, I wonder if CARE was planning this attack and wrote the condemnation to the attack before even the attack happened. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I will never be surprised. I will say to CARE, we will accept your condemnation to any of this attack if you can just do me a favor. Do the American people a favor. Quote the Quran. You cannot condemn Muslim from practicing the teaching of Allah in the Quran. You cannot do that. But since the American people do not know what's written in the Quran, they can get away with it. We condemn this act. Are you kidding me? This is your process who did that. We got a video years ago where the Muslim imam speaks in the English language and mm -hmm. in the Arabic language. Same guy. In the English language, he condemned 9-11. He actually cursed Allah 300 times on this. May Allah burn them in hell. May Allah do this. I'm talking about the 19 Hijacker. Yeah, yeah. And when you hear that Muslim imam, you fall in love with Islam, not just with the imam. You fall in love with his cult. Yeah. Now, the same guy have another Arabic program. Well, I wish we can have this in, this, in the future. I will find this video to play them for our audience. It's in Arabic language. And he's praising the 19 hijacker. May Allah bless them in the my, paradise. My. May they enjoy the forever, forever virgin. May we all follow their footsteps in the Arabic language. Same guy. In English, he condemned September 11 attackers. In Arabic, he's praising the, the September 11 attackers. That is Nahad Awad. That's every Muslim. And the proof is, is this. Here we go. If not out, if you're listening to me, debate me on the topic of Islam, love, and peace. He will never even talk with somebody, somebody like me. You know mm -hmm. why? Because I will expose him, I will put him in the corner, and I will literally destroy his, his organization, CARE. Mm -hmm. It's a Muslim jihadi organization. They're Hamas, and they will continue to always to be what they are, deception. Allah is the best deceiver, and Muslims who follow him are also deceiver. They will tell you what you want to hear, but in reality, they're doing what Allah orders them to do. Issam, I want to hit a couple more topics with you here this evening. Uh, this is a billboard that was captured in Pennsylvania uh, by WGAL, making the Taliban great again. And uh, we're, here we have uh, the current president, uh, Joseph Biden, dressed up in Islamic garb. Is your reaction to this is... President Biden making the Taliban great again? He already made them great again. He is named by me O Biden. If you remember when Obama was in the White House, he made Iran a great country. Mm -hmm. 152 billion. With what condition that they will not make the bomb for 10 years? By the way, why he was negotiating with them the transfusion we're spending to make the uranium 238, which is fit for the bomb? That transfusion was never stopped. We give them 152 billion, and today Iran will have the nuclear. Mr. O. Biden did exactly what Obama would have done if he's in the White House. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the Taliban of Afghanistan would have never dreamed to buy the weapon we give them. If they would give us the 80 or 90 billion dollars, we would never have took this money under Trump to make them to give them the weapon. They got it for free. Not only we give them all this weapon, high tech now. We're not talking about some uh, guns and some mm -hmm. stuff that they can get from somewhere else. They can get from Russia. No, high tech, free gift. 
He made Taliban great, great for good, not again, for good. And by the way, we are paying every month for Taliban as long as Taliban is still alive. So it's not just he gives them this uh, weapon and that's it. Mm -hmm. I promise you, billions of dollars are going every month towards the Taliban mm -hmm. for hope that they will continue to have mercy on us. We are now under the mercy of the jihad organization. Instead of the run away from us, we are <laughs> bowing down to them to give them whatever they want. And that is a sad story, Brother Jim. One other issue, and that is Ramadan, uh, that began with the crescent of the moon to the crescent of the moon, yeah. uh, the 30 days here, the period. And again, the religion of peace has a chart. They're calling it the Ramadan Bombathon, <laughs> and uh, which they show in the name of Islam, there have been 35 attacks uh, that have taken place, 35 attacks, and uh, 181 people killed in the name of Islam since Ramadan began, day number 10. Uh, and but then they also compare about how much terror has been done by all other religions combined by right-wing or anti-Muslim extremists, and you see zeros across the board. So Ramadan is to be this time of self-evaluation, self-examination, uh, fasting, prayer. It's supposed to be uh, this time taking place, yet we see violence escalating during Ramadan. What is the first word? Self what? Uh, uh, self uh, uh, examination. Examination. Self, yeah. To what? What are you going to measure yourself to? What? To the word of Allah, brother Jim. Muslim reads the entire Quran in the month of Ramadan. I wish the American people read it next year, not in one month, twenty eight, twenty nine. And you say days. that for people to understand. To what understand teaching. what's in it. Mm -hmm. That's why we translate it. Mm -hmm. When you read the Quran and you examine yourself to the word of Allah of the Quran, you find yourself you're falling short mm -hmm. because you did not fulfill your duty before Allah. Muhammad stated in the Hadith that if a Muslim man died, not without performing jihad, without even thinking about performing jihad, you think you meditate in the mosque, you just go, oh Allah, may you bless me Allah and I can put a bomb in some church. May I can take some building down. Okay, if you don't that, think that's the self-examination. That is the self-examination. If you don't examine your heart, examine your mind about performing jihad, and you died, so you are a nice, peaceful Muslim. Okay, you never saw about killing mm -hmm. infidels. You die as an infidel. No, so you die as a hypocrite. And we all know what is a hypocrite, and the punishment of the hypocrite. Hypocrites are the Muslims who refuse to engage in war for the sake of Allah or to contribute mm -hmm. for jihad. Quran chapter three, verse one sixty-seven. The punishment for the Muslims is Quran chapter 9 verse 73 for Muslims to perform jihad against the hypocrite as much as they perform jihad against the infidels. So if you want to examine yourself to the Quran, which you are reading in the month of Ramadan, you can't help it but to perform jihad. That 181 is nothing. Wait until the end of the month. And if you got the real number, it will be in the thousands. In mm -hmm. reality, Islam get in power Muslims get empowered, they are filled with the demonic spirit of Allah during the month of Ramadan, and that's why they perform jihad even higher. Well, and they get much greater reward yeah. when you kill somebody in the month of Ramadan than any other month of the year. So it is more encouraged by the Muslim Imam in the Muslim world for Muslims to perform jihad. You will never see a Muslim Imam in America today ask Muslims in America to perform jihad. It's amazing. All the Muslim Imam in the Middle East are right with Allah, mm -hmm. and all the Muslim Imam in America are right with America. Mm. That is temporary. When the right time comes, Takiyah. it will flip yeah. over. Takiyah. Yeah. They're yeah. Takiyah. Okay, so we had the, ba uh, the Bamathon for Ramadan here for 2022, but you talked about you know getting into the thousands. Well, that's what happened in 2021. Sure. Uh, here, the, uh, f because during that month of uh, Ramadan, there were 222 attacks, <laughs> 1,103 people killed. But again, you see all other religions, zero. Uh, the year before, in 2020, it was 175 attacks, 700. 18 individuals killed in 2020. Brother Jim, I have a video. I don't know if we can play it. We're not going to play it. It's not open on my screen right now. Where you see all the religion of the world, atheists, agnostic, and everybody, all of them are living in harmony with each other. Sometimes you see brother kill brother, okay? A husband kill wife. So these things happen. But I'm talking about this massive of hundreds of killing. You will never see a Buddhist or an atheist or agnostic or a Jew or a Christian does that. Only in the name the, of their religion. In the, in the name of the religion, according mm -hmm. to some books or some beliefs or some doctrine. Mm -hmm. There is only one cult, a savage cult. It's called the cult of Islam. Where in it you see Muslims are commanded by Allah, their God, by Muhammad, their prophet, to perform jihad, to do these violence acts. And that's why you see Muslims always do that. Yeah. 
not just in the, in the, uh, during the month of Ramadan, it's all year long. It's preferred in the month of Ramadan. And when you get serious about your belief in Islam and you read the Quran, you can't help but, but to do it. Yeah. Yusama Daktak with us here tonight, and uh, we've got more to talk about, but let's open some phone lines this evening to give you opportunity to call and ask questions of Usama. Our phone number here to TV30 and Focus Studio, 414-935-3000. I make that 3030, 414-935-3030. That'll get you right to this studio. Uh, or you may call toll free at 800-733-8830. That's 1-800-733-8830. If you'd like to text in your question tonight, you can use the text line, which is 414-439-3585. That's 414-439-3585. Maybe you disagree with Usama. Uh, maybe you are a follower of Islam and, and uh, want to challenge him. You're welcome to give us a call here this evening. Um, and uh, perhaps you've got some question on Islam. We welcome your phone calls. Again, 414 935 3030 is a telephone number, toll free, it's 800-733-8830. And if you'd like to text in your question this evening, 414-439-3585. Yusama, are we getting it as a nation, or are we sinking further and further I think, in I deception? Think, I think we're getting to the end, Brother Jim. And the scripture have clearly said that in the end, they will call evil good and good evil, and that's what's happening in America. Mm -hmm. And also I know that I don't see America anywhere in the end of time. America won't, must be dismantled, must become a weak country, uh, militarily, uh, uh, economically, uh, uh, spiritually. And this is exactly what's happening. The scripture is very clear. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If I make a quiz of 10 statements, true or false, and I take them to any community in this country, to any number, I can give it to the American people, most likely, 99% or so of the American people will fail miserably. Hmm. Even though if I'll make a true and false ridiculous question, like Islam is a loving and a peaceful religion, I guarantee you 99% of the American people will say it's true, even though it's 100% false. Wow. And so on with the rest. Uh, American people are so smart. They're intelligent about everything. They literally walked on the moon, which by the way, Muslim in the Middle East say that's a lie. You could not go up to the moon. There's no way you can talk to the moon. They lie. American people lie. We, when you go up to the moon, you look at the earth, it's fear. They said, oh, that is a great evidence that they're lying because the earth is flat. That's how bad Islam is. So American people are so smart about everything. We walked on the moon. But when it comes to the topic of Islam, we are the dumbest of the dumb. Hmm. And I hate to say that, but my challenge for the American people, study the Quran. Learn about Islam. It's a book you can read literally in 26, 28 hours, say 40 hours if you're a slow reader. When you study the Quran and read the Quran from cover to cover, as we have translated to you, by the way, you don't have to read my translation. Get Yusuf Ali. We call him son of a gun. He's a professional liar in his translation. Get any translation you like. After you finish reading, ask yourself the question, is jihad a teacher of Islam? Is Islam a, a love and a peace for religion? And guess what? The answer will be clear just from reading the Quran. Forget about what you heard from us tonight or what you have heard of me from the past. Let the Quran answer this question. Is Islam a loving, peaceful religion? How can Islam be a loving, peaceful religion where Allah forgot to mention to us one verse where he commands the Muslim believers to live in peace and love with the Jews and the Christians? These are the nearest to them. And on the other hand, how can we read in the Quran all these savage teachings, the violent teachings, from literally from page one to the last page. Can you imagine, Brother Jim, on page one, Allah told the Muslim believers, do not take the Jews as Christian for friends. Why? It is a guide that says a straight way, Islam, not the way, the way of those who you agree, the Muslims, not the way of those whom your, his wrath is against them. Allah said that the Jews, the wrath of Allah is on the Jew. And Allah calls the Christian in the last verse of Quran chapter one, the last one. So. Can a Muslim take a Jew or a Christian for a friend when Allah told them in chapter 1 that I am, my wrath is against the Jews and all Christians are lost? Wow. That is the teaching of Islam from chapter 1. Let me, uh, we've got some text questions coming in here this sure. evening. Uh, this is one saying in a, a hospital here in our area, I noticed that one third of the doctors on their listing had Middle Eastern names and uh, also seen at a park groups of Middle Eastern men. Is it 
uh, Usama's opinion that the number of Islamist Islamists in the U.S. is rapidly growing. Absolutely. If we talked about it a little bit earlier, but if you look at the chart of Muslim coming to America, and I wish I had the chart with me, but people can do some search online. It's sound. the Islam start growing a little bit, like normal. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they've been coming to America for 70 years. And they grow, grow, grow. And then we have September 11. I thought September 11 is going to drop it. No. Under Mr. George W. Bush, they continue to grow in number. And then when Mr. Obama became part of the quadruple, then we have one year, Mr. Trump, still the same, close it, and the following year, that's when the number drop. Mr. Trump did was, was the right thing. Muslims will continue to come to America. Mr. Bush brag about Muslim doctors. Mm -hmm. Same video you play, the first one, when the jihad were behind him. He said, doctors, Muslim doctors, there are plenty of Muslim doctors coming to America, and it's not fair. Why? Because the American doctors, those who study hard and have all these years of education, they could not get the same job which Muslims come from overseas with much less education, with zero de debt. I mean, literally, when you study in Egypt to be a doctor, you don't hardly pay any money. It's free. You come to America and you study for 15, whatever number of years, and then you don't get the job. Why? Because I know from inside sources that when they offer these jobs, they give literally half of the price which American doctors used to get. So the American will not take the job. And hey, Indian, Egyptian, Saudi would love to have the job. After all, they would like to come to America anyway. They will work as doctors in our hospitals for free if we allow them. And you give them that big salary, why not? Wow. Let's go to uh, Kelly calling in from Mayville. Hi, Kelly, you're on the air. Hi, I was just wondering what's the best way to share your faith with a Muslim. I tried sharing mine while I was going to, and they wouldn't even enter my apartment. I don't know if it was because I was a Christian and she knew it, but I'm just guessing that. But what, mm -hmm. anyway, what's the best way to, sh how do you share your faith with them? Amen. Great. Thank Very you, good Kelly. Question. Very good question. And thanks for the question, brother. Uh, I believe the problem when we share our faith with the Muslim people and we just tell them all what we want to tell them about Christianity, we think by telling them that God loves you, He is the Bible, the true word of God, and Jesus died across your sin, and if you uh, confess your sin in Him and you believe in Him, He will forgive your sin and you will have eternal life. Do you want to hear more? That is what we say, and that's what we hear. Now, if I'm a Muslim, listen to a Christian man talk to me like that. You know what I'm hearing? Listen carefully. Hi, I am a, an infidel. I, I come to you with a corrupt book, the Bible, and I want to uh, tell you about Jesus, who is one of three different gods we worship, who, by the way, did not die on the cross, and he never rose from the dead. And if you believe in him, you become an infidel, and you burn in hell forever. Do you want to know more? This is exactly what we're doing. Uh, quickly, because for the sake of time, the best way to minister to the Muslim people, get my green small booklet. It's called The Straight Way to Eternal Life. It's available on our website. The Straight Way to Eternal Life. And it is three steps. Number one, we use the Quran to prove to the Muslims that the Bible is a perfect word of God, never been changed, it will never be changed. Number two, we use the Quran to prove to our dear Muslim friends that the Quran cannot be the word of God for the large amount of contradiction and many errors in it. Number three, we share the gospel with them. My friends, as I always say, if you're driving your car and everything is moving smooth, you will never stop to ask someone about if you go in the right direction. When do we stop and ask when we find out we're lost? As long as the GPS is running in your car, on your phone, you continue to travel. This is the reality of our dear Muslim friends. They think they're on the right track. We're not telling them anything new when we talk about Jesus, death, resurrection, and the forgiveness of their sins through Jesus' life and death, resurrection. Why? Because they already know it. And they know it to be falsehood. The only way we can, we can catch their attention to learn about Jesus and to accept Christ. First, they need to know that the Bible is perfect. Second, they need to know that Islam is a false religion. Muhammad is not a prophet. And then we can share the truth of the gospel with them. I hope this answers your question. Again, the website is thestraightway.org. That green book that you talked sure. about is available there, thestraightway.org as well as uh, Usama has translated the Quran into English. Uh, that's available there, also exposing the truth about jihad. Uh, you'll find that uh, there as well. Here's another text in question. Sure. Uh, my name is Bianca uh, from Cedarburg. Is it true that Muslims can marry their first cousins? Please mention this uh, uh, to you for, for sure. confirmation. Uh, the Quran is very clear. If you go to Quran chapter 30 and verse 50, Allah gave Muhammad, and Muhammad is a noble example for every Muslim to follow, the right to marry his cousins from his father's side and from his mother's side. So married to a first cousin, it is Islamic, nothing, uh, you don't see anything wrong in it, even though sadly, many of the children coming out of this marriage, Brother Jim, 
mentally they're not completely up there because mm -hmm. the genetic and the, uh, the, the uh, we're becoming weaker and weaker. So it's better to marry somebody stranger to marry first cousin. Islam teaches that and Muhammad did it. And uh, so Muslims continue to do it and they will continue to do it. Mm -hmm. Worse than that is marry little children. Sadly, even with 120,000 came from Afghanistan, which we did not vet, by the way. Many of these men come to America. They have their little grandchildren or little daughters. Surprise, surprise, later we found out these are actually their wives. And there's nothing you can do in America about a Muslim Afghani who's living with his child wife in America, even here mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Let's go to West Dallas. Brad, good evening. You're on the air. Hello, brothers. I just wanted to point a few things out, and uh, not to offend the Muslims, but you got to tell them the truth. And most people don't think straight regarding this. We know that in Islam, it's okay to lie in order to advance Islam. Now, if Allah were really God, that would mean he's all-powerful. And it would also mean that truth would not be a threat to him. The truth would be just fine with him. You, he wouldn't have to resort to lies and being named as the greatest deceiver, Amen. which is the greatest liar of all time. So not only does it prove not a god, it proves that he's the devil himself. Meanwhile, you've got Jesus Christ who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but by me. Everything about the biblical God is about truth. Amen. And uh, I don't see how someone can not see that, but people yeah. don't think right, I guess. Thank you, Brad. Well, Appreciate let me the call. give the and, reference and, to and what tell you said. what I'm going to do here, because there's also a text in question on the same, same, same line you, here. You, you this is a Duane from Milwaukee. He says, where in the Quran does it say Allah is best deceiver? Brad was just referring to that. Thank you, and God bless you and your family, uh, the caller In fact, if you look in the beginning of uh, your Quran, Brother Jim, the first mm -hmm. bold statement above the uh, verse 1 of the Quran, the first bold statement, in, uh, yep, it, what do we have there about deceiver? Two references. It is... In the bold statement? It, uh, verse 1 indicates yes. that Muslims worship the God of this world, who is Satan, who is known as the best deceiver, who leads people astray, and who desires to fill hell with the infidels who do not accept Islam. You see the reference to the deceiver? We've got two references there. Yes, and uh, then, yeah, the praise be to Allah. No, no, before oh, the verse, in the bold oh, statement. Okay. He's a deceiver. You don't see a reference there, the passage in the Quran. Yeah, 354 yeah. at 830. That's exact. See, there's the two locations where you know, they, Allah yeah. said, Hum makar, wallahu makar, wallahu khair makreen. They deceive, and Allah deceive, and Allah is the best deceiver. Mm -hmm. As for the lies, uh, I know that when you say something like that, and you don't give the reference, then people think that we're making it up. No. Muhammad taught the Muslim in the Hadith, it is lawful to lie in three cases. A man to his wife, to his wives, that they will be pleased with him, at the time of war, for war is deception, or to make peace between people. They obviously meant Muslim believers. So in Islam, you can lie to your wife, and you can lie to your enemy, and you can lie to your friends. That means in Islam, you're literally a walking liar. And by the way, as, we, as my dear brother mentioned earlier, Satan is the father of all lies, and that is what exactly mm -hmm. uh, Allah, who Allah is. He's the father of lies. Well, here's, here's 354 right here, sure, and, well, and that's what it says. And they deceived, and Allah deceived, and Allah is the best deceiver. That's the word of Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you cannot uh, run away from that. How far you can go? In the Bible, the truth is, in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not lie. Old Testament, New Testament, liars will go to hell. Revelation 21.8. In the Quran, you can lie. We got two passages uh, where Allah said you can lie in your oath and you can lie and by denying your faith. It is reality. Islam cannot be true. There is no truth in Islam. Uh, a religion or a cult built on lies, there is no truth in it. It is not from God because our God does not deceive anybody. Our God is not a liar. He is the truth, as our dear brother said from Jesus' word in John 14, 6. Let's go to Ted calling from Greenfield. Hi, Ted. You're on the air. Yes, good evening. Both of you. Uh, it's good to uh, good to see your program once again. I uh, have a, a, a quandary about the history of conflict between Muslims and Christianity, and it's very very simple, very basic, really. Mm -hmm. Who is the principal attacker? Who are the ones that repeatedly and constantly attack 
and who are the ones that constantly and repeatedly defend. There are exceptions, certainly. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the exceptions I, I'll mention quickly is, is the Knights Templar, back when they rescued uh, Jerusalem. But uh, I'll let it go at that, and if okay. you have anything to uh, add to it, I, I'd appreciate it. Great. Thank uh, you, Ted. Thank you. All the wars which Muslim led, I agree with our dear caller here, all the wars which Muslim led, it is defensive war. No, offensive war. Don't listen to lies. If a Muslim come to you and said, it is defensive war, said, who attacked who? Who started the fight? How many countries went in war against Muhammad and his companions in his first 10 years, when he, uh, obviously the last 10 years of his life, after he immigrated from Mecca to Medina? In Medina, for 10 years, Muhammad was attacking caravan. Muhammad was attacking other New York, uh, uh, New York community, like Bani Qurayza and Bani Nadir and others. And then Muhammad sent his armies to attack other countries. It is Muhammad invading other land. It is Muhammad using the sword and the mm -hmm. power of the sword to force people to believe in him. This is the reality. You will never see in the history of Islam, as I have studied it for all these of my life, that somebody went to attack the Muslims. That's why the Muslim defend himself. It is always offensive wars. Usama, one final question. We have just two minutes left in the program tonight. If all of this is what you're saying is, is true about the Quran, about jihad, and so forth, why is Islam on the growth? Why is it growing so much? Why are we seeing more and more mosques? Why are we seeing more and more people running for office? Islamists? Uh, we see Rashida, you know, Tlaib, and, 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 and Omar, and others. Okay. And, yeah. it, because we did not see the reality of Islam, what it is. We've been lied to, you and we'll continue to vote for the people who are running with the Muslims, because after all, Islam is love and peace for religion. Do you know that Islam is only growing in America today? I just, as I mentioned on our radio broadcast, I talked to last week to Saudi Muslim who became a Christian. I know Iranian Muslim who became a Christian. I know, mm -hmm. and those are the ones who know Islam. They're living, I mean, you, when you tell me somebody live in Saudi Arabia, an Arab, leaving Islam, becoming a Christian, sadly, there are millions of Muslims leaving Islam and becoming atheists because there's not enough Christian to minister to them. That's a sorrowful sto story. Mm -hmm. But in America, many people become Muslims. Why? Because he hears these lies about the love of Islam and the peace of Islam, the uh, tolerance of Islam, the great treatment of women in Islam, and on and on. So this is reality, Brother Jim. If you, if you hear lies and you believe it, you will jump in it. If you know the truth about Islam, why Muslims leave Islam? They leave Islam because they got to know Islam. Mm -hmm. They study the Quran and they learn about Muhammad. Why is American people becoming Muslims? Because they know nothing about Muhammad, they know nothing about the Quran. And we give them power because we believe in their lies they teach about themselves. Giving in to deception. So that's what it is. Wow. wow. Deception. Well, Usama, thank you for being here today uh, with us on radio earlier today, now on television this evening. We appreciate your thank you, Brother Jim. It so. is always my joy to be with you and all our wonderful people here. Usama Daktak with us here this evening. Again, his website is thestraightway.org, thestraightway.org. And uh, folks, you can examine the information for yourself. He's got a number of resources on his site, including these books and video materials as well to stay informed on these critical issues. As he quoted from Hosea earlier, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Our time is gone. Thanks for joining us here tonight on In Focus.